Is Lil Nas X being sued for partying too hard? Would that actually hold up in court? Why did this YouTuber abandon their child? The answer is despicable. The guy from Shameless did what to his neighbor's house while he was on vacation? All this and more, but first, Trump has been indicted again. Officially the second Trump indictment this year. Two months ago, it was for falsifying business records. This month, it's for way more classified documents. Um, so it's the same thing? Relax, it gets more interesting, I promise. Basically, the government wanted these documents and Trump was like, fine, here you go. And the government was like, is that everything? And Trump was like, that's everything. But it wasn't everything. Trump, you little rapscallion. Now he's been found with boxes and boxes full of this stuff. But that doesn't mean Trump's automatically guilty. Trump claims that, as president, he had the power to declassify classified information, which there is some precedent for. He maybe just didn't go through the proper channels. So what are the charges? One, the Espionage Act. Two, obstruction of official proceeding. Three, falsifying or destroying business records during official proceeding. And four, conspiracy. But will they stick? I'm not sure. The charges seem to be rooted in the types of documents, the super secret kind. How they were retrieved and stored at Mar-a-Lago and how Trump allegedly was talking about and sharing these documents with foreign officials visiting Mar-a-Lago. But these are just the claims. We won't know anything for certain until the trial. And thanks to the rocket docket, we have been assured that this will be a speedy trial that should take place as early as 2024. So what does Trump have to say about all this? I'm an innocent man. I Technically, yes, because in this country, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But let's look at the other side of this. Didn't Biden also have classified documents in his possession? Yes. So why do people say this is any different? Well, for one thing, they're saying that Trump just had way more. And two, when Biden was asked to hand them over, he did so promptly. But is it really fair to be dogpiling all these charges on Trump just for being, I guess, less polite about it than Biden? Even Elon had this to say about it. There does seem to be far higher interest in pursuing Trump compared to other people in politics. Very important that the justice system rebut what appears to be differential enforcement or they will lose public trust. And you know what? I agree. Whether you love or hate Trump, most politicians have done something against the rules. I say, lock them all up. And when they go to trial, they can hire me as their lawyer. The guy from Shameless is getting sued for 600K over chopping down some trees? So this is what happened. William H. Macy's neighbor leaves for a vacation, right? And while he's gone, Macy hires people to cut down the trees that are on his neighbor's property. The guy comes back like, no, my decades old mature pines and promptly sues Macy for 600K for the trees and emotional damages. Emotional damage. Now these emotional damages seem a little steep, but Macy fires back with a counter complaint, claiming that after a storm, the trees were swerving too close to Macy's home and posed danger of collapsing Macy's roof where his children slept. So who's in the right? Well, let's look at the facts. One, the trees were on the neighbor's property, not Macy's. Macy may have had the right to trim what's over on his side, but not destroy the entire trees themselves. Two, he didn't communicate with his neighbor. It's always smart to talk to your neighbor first and the judge may fault him for that. I mean, if this was really an issue, he could have just brought it up to the guy. And three, Macy and the landscapers were trespassing. You can't just wait for your neighbor to go on vacation and sneak over with a team of landscapers to destroy property that's not yours. That's a, that's a crime. However, 600K for some trees and emotional damages? How emotionally damaged were you over these trees? Who are you, Shell Silverstein? Look, don't destroy your neighbor's property, but also, if you're gonna sue, make sure it's proportional to the crime. Lil Nas X threw a Hollywood mansion party so big, the owners are suing him for $1 million. So allegedly, Lil Nas and Zed throw a rager on the premises, a rager so big, so crazy, it caused property damage to the walls, ceiling, and furniture. The landlord claims that they knew that parties were strictly prohibited, but threw one anyway. I mean, can you blame them? Look at this place. It looks like it was made for ragers. Trust me, I would know. Let's take a look at the landlord's claims. One, over a thousand people were in attendance. Two, there was over $25,000 worth of damages. And three, they lost $45,000 in rent fixing these damages. Sheesh, that's a pretty hefty price tag for a party they allegedly knew they couldn't have. Also, this wasn't a free get together. Allegedly, Zed and Lil Nas made off with $250,000 in profit each. Getting paid to party? Am I in the wrong field? But wait, Lil Nas claims innocence. 
He says he got permission to throw the party from the tenants and furthermore claims he hired a cleanup crew after to leave the mansion in better condition than it was in before. So what does Lil Nas do? Mike, enough with the rhetorical questions. It's engaging. Lil Nas sues the tenants because they were the ones to co-sign on the party. We have yet to hear a response from the tenants. So now it looks like the tenants and Lil Nas are playing hot potato with who's gonna foot the bill for this million dollar lawsuit. Who do you guys think is at fault? Leave your comments below. And while you're at it, remember to like and subscribe. Disney, the king of copyright law, is being sued for copyright infringement? Don't worry guys, I hear a spoonful of sugar helps the taste of your own medicine go down. It's a Mary Poppins reference. Stick to the law, man. Fine, geez. So Disney's Lorcana trading card game is under fire because allegedly the game mechanics seem to be completely ripped off from Rush of i -Corps. Or at least that's what the company Upper Deck is claiming in their lawsuit. The complaint stems from the fact that the designer, Ryan Miller, worked on the previous game and then worked on this new game for Disney. You know, when you want to impress the boss at the new job, Disney has finally responded by saying the claims are baseless. And you know what? They might be right. As it turns out, copyright law protects a lot of things like artwork, characters, and original writings, but it does not protect gameplay mechanics. So unless a Lorcana designer broke a clause in his upper deck contract, or Disney copied more than just the style of gameplay, it's very likely they'll be okay. Which is shocking to exactly zero people. I mean, it's Disney. They literally co-authored America's copyright laws. But what do you guys think? Will this affect you when playing either game? I know I'm gonna buy both sets of cards just to see which one goes up more in value after all this. Did this YouTuber really kick their kid to the curb because they weren't allowed to film them? Nikki Philippi is a vlogger here on YouTube and I guess in order to spice up her content, she wanted to adopt an entire child? Guys, humans are not playthings you can just use to farm clicks. No, bad Mike. Do it like we rehearsed. Sorry, sorry. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell. Let's take a look at the video that resurfaced on TikTok and got everyone super upset. We are not adopting from Thailand. Whoa. And they actually messaged us on Instagram and we're like, hey, we're coming to Nashville. Well, <clears throat> then the next day I get an email from someone else within a hole and they're like, we just wanted to make sure you're aware of our social media policy. What social media <laughs> policy? <laughs> you are not allowed to talk about them or share any images, photos, videos, anything about them online for a year. Yeah, and that, Nikki's got a YouTube channel where we share a whole lot. They were adopting the child from Thailand, and according to Philippi, Thailand has very specific rules when it comes to adoption. Namely, you can't film the kid and post him on social media for at least a year you know, to make sure the parents aren't just adopting to exploit the child. So yeah, if that's a deal breaker to you, not the best look. General consensus seems to be that a child shouldn't serve the same purpose as your avocado toast. Look, we've talked about this before, but child exploitation online is already a huge problem in the US and you wanna import more kids into the country to make the problem bigger? No one wants to see human traffickers get their own panel at VidCon. Unlike the film and TV industry, which has regulations and laws in place to protect child actors, the internet has virtually none to protect child influencers. Probably high time to start legislating some though, especially with the relatively new and abstract arena of internet personalities. If not being able to film your kid means you don't want them, then you probably shouldn't adopt them in the first place. 